I'm Noah Campbell, Technical Marketing at BlackBerry, and we're here with Sriram, our Senior Product Director for Silence Gateway. Sriram, thanks for joining us. Please introduce yourself. Sure, happy to be here, Noah. Uh, my name is Sriram Krishnan. I lead the ZTNA, Zero Trust Network Access Charter for BlackBerry. So in my role here at BlackBerry, I am responsible for delivering a best-in-class ZTNA experience for businesses and enterprises, help businesses protect their cyber assets and provide peace of mind to the CISOs and CXOs. And most importantly, I get to work with some world-class engineers and a high-performing team. Good answer. I'm glad we've got you here to talk about ZTNA today. You know, it's it's a it's a trending topic for folks. It's something that's coming up in a lot of CISO level conversations and a lot of network and security operations kind of conversations. But many folks don't really have a grasp of what it actually is. So at an entry level, what is ZTNA? Zero Trust is a philosophy. It is a philosophy of default deny, whereas ZTNA is a solution. So ZTNA as a solution delivers secure access from anywhere, anytime, from any healthy device to business resources that are residing uh, both on-prem as well as like in the cloud. And by employing some principles such as least privilege access, continuous authentication and authorization, network threat protection, and more. So simply put, ZTNA is anywhere, anytime, just in time, and just enough access. So technically, a holistic ZTNA solution should be able to exercise control over management plane, data plane, and control plane. And ideally, a ZTNA solution should be more than just identity and context. Because whenever like we refer to a ZTNA solution, everyone thinks that ZTNA solution is all about identity and context. Yes, identity and context are the guardrails when it comes to a strong ZTNA solution but it is the underpinnings such as the zero trust data sources, the zero trust policy engine, the zero trust policy orchestrator, the ACL rules, the management framework, that all together form a zero trust system. That is what is going to like really define a ZTNA solution. So I think I gave a long answer, but hopefully like it helps our audience to understand that ZTNA is just more than identity and context, and ZTNA is just more than default deny, but it is a system that pulls together all these different elements in delivering a strong ZTNA experience, both for SecOps, NetOps, as well as like for the end users. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So deeply interconnected kind of tool that it's, you know, very beyond just the basic kind of connectivity, right? It's something that is, you know, living on the network and watching many different facets of activity and behavior to make those kinds of real time, really quick decisions for folks. Exactly. And, and you said a very profound word interconnected. So interconnected is very, very important when it comes to a ZTNA system because, um, when you, when you look at like large enterprises, they may have a dozen or more security and network tools, but what they will be missing is the interconnection. And that is where the ZTNA solution comes in handy because ZTNA solution brings them all like together. So interconnected, yes, that is very important. I like Good. it. I'm glad, I'm glad I get the check mark for that one. So yeah. when we look at, you know, why is this important right now, right? Like, I think you can kind of interpret from the answer from the previous question why this is important, but from why is zero trust in particular a really kind of important paradigm for us to keep in mind? And and why in general zero trust network access is is now kind of becoming the way to go? Why is that the case? Well, that's a great question. Um, ZTNA is important for a number of reasons, but to appreciate ZTNA, one has to put themselves in the shoes of a CISO and the challenges that the CISOs are facing day in and day out. As a CISO, I have to be a business enabler by providing secure remote access to my users, irrespective of where my users are. And I have to protect my cyber assets, whether it is in the cloud or on-prem. And I have to strategize moving my on-prem network and security tools to the cloud. And I have to deliver zero day threat detection. And I have to do it all with a small budget. And there are several different paths the CISOs may be able to take, but every path requires a starting point, and one such starting point is ZTNA. And 
what ZTNA helps deliver is it helps the CISOs address the challenges that I highlighted. And we also touched upon the interconnection part earlier. So ZTNA as a solution, as a fabric, brings together these different security and network tools into one holistic solution and it delivers a very strong starting point for the CISOs to modernize the entire cyber security program. It's, you know, it's an important factor to keep in mind when we're trying to, you know, balance that question between enablement and security. Um, so I think that's a really good good point that you're bringing. So if we're looking at, you know, you've got me convinced that we need to have ZTNA. You, you know, you did that in the first two seconds here. But what are some features we should be looking at in a ZTNA solution? What are some of the kind of optimal features that, you know, if you're going to get one, it needs to have this? Well, like uh, if I am a CAO or a CISO, I would take a use case centric approach than a feature centric approach. So uh, from from that standpoint, from that vintage standpoint, I would say that the CISOs should look for solutions that can support managed and unmanaged devices that can deliver zero trust to on-prem as well as like cloud resources that can help like reduce the attack surface. We call it as like attack surface reduction that is um, possible through segmented network access control, which is one of the core capabilities of any ZTNA solution. A frictionless experience for the end users, because we don't want to like by introducing ZTNA solution, uh, cause some inhibition for user adoption. So we believe in this uh, notion of, hey, like uh, security and usability should not become a zero sum game. So frictionless experience with continuous authentication and authorization. Uh, zero day threat detection so that I can prevent my users from reaching out to one of those phishing sites. Uh, phishing is a very common problem and one of the uh, biggest contributors for many of the um, vulnerabilities that the organizations are being um, uh, put to. And similarly, like social engineering. So um, I'm going to be like too concerned as a CISO about how I can overcome um, these challenges. And most importantly, OK, with my resources residing both in the cloud as well as like in the on prem, I want to get rid of my VPN solution. It's a good point. You kind of bring me into my next question, right, is is, you know, how can folks start rolling out a ZTNA product across an organization? I think you're going to tell me that they need to take a use case based approach to identifying how they can best do that. Can you, can you go into that a little bit more? You know, what what's a good example of a use case? Yes, VPN replacement at a broad example, but if I want kind of a small focus group of, yeah. of people to kind of target to test out, you know, the efficacy of the ZTNA, but also the user experience, right? The, you know, how much of a better time are my users having and how much more productive are they uh, on ZTNA versus maybe an, uh, you know, an older technology like VPN? What What's a good kind of, initial first use case to get started with? Well, uh, you are right on. You read my mind. So when it comes to how enterprises can begin a ZTNA type of a rollout, the first thing that they need to define for themselves is, hey, what use cases, okay? Even though it is fairly easy to deploy a ZTNA solution, and especially if it is a silent gateway ZTNA solution, which is a cloud native solution, I would strongly recommend every enterprise to begin that ZTNA journey with a POC, okay? So define the POC, define the use cases, and also define the success criteria. So to your most pertinent question on what can be some of the use cases, during the course of the POC, I would suggest that uh, we limit enterprises, businesses limit to two to three use cases. One use case can be accessing a SaaS app a SaaS app can be Office 365, Salesforce, or any of those popular SaaS applications. The second use case can be how the ACL policies can be defined. We do have a very elegant access control list framework. I know like we don't want to get into the weeds in this session, but the ACL framework is the live line for any ZTNA solution. So the second use case can be uh, a NetOps admin trying out how they can construct a ACL uh, policy. And then uh, the third use case can be 
how they can gain visibility into the network traffic and, and how can they do that? They can go to the um, gateway, silence gateway, even screen and find out uh, how the uh, traffic classification is happening, what type of threats are being detected, so on and so forth. So I would suggest that during the course of the POC, that two or three such use cases be defined. And if on-prem or private access is important, then a fourth use case that can be considered is um, that requires like deploying a component called as a gateway connector. So deploy a gateway connector so that your users can also, the POC users can test out how they can seamlessly traverse across the complex firewall boundaries to reach out to the private resources. So once this POC is defined and the POC is executed, I would monitor the POC and then I would iterate the policies based on the feedback that we are receiving from the POC users. And once the size success criteria is met, then I think it's time to roll out production. So when it comes to rolling out um, production, what I would suggest is, again, no need to rush. Uh, you can simultaneously run your existing connectivity solution alongside the ZTNA solution and slowly start migrating your users from the existing connectivity solution onto the more modern ZTNA solution. And we have also seen some customers take the approach of rolling out ZTNA solution to their contractors or to their temporary workers or in some cases, they roll out ZTNA solution to users whom they think don't need full VPN access because one of the fallbacks or the pitfalls of a VPN solution is the um, vulnerability it can cause because with VPN, we are letting like users gain access to the entire network. So we have seen customers limiting the VPN exposure by en masse migrating some of their users belonging to certain organizations who do not need full access to the network onto a ZTNA solution so that they can also bolster their uh, security. So this is the approach that I would suggest. Start at the POC, review the POC, then start doing the production grade rollout. And it, it should be a fairly easy exercise that can be completed. Let's be also very pragmatic. I would say that this exercise uh, can be completed within like four to six weeks. So I think that's a fantastic timeline to give folks and a great kind of eye on what is possible. Now, while you're, you brought me to the topic of Silence Gateway specifically, you know, we, we've kind of outlined, you know, what the challenges are, how we would roll it out and why ZTNA is so important right now. How does Silence Gateway meet the modern kind of ZTNA needs? What is, what is it about our product that really kind of fills this demand and, and keeps folks, you know, defense ready? Well, that's a great question. Um, foundationally, Silence Gateway is a cloud native solution. So from day one, it was built to be a cloud native solution. We did not repurpose a existing on-prem technology to um, shoehorn it into a cloud native solution. Grounds up, it has been a cloud native solution. And that gives like immense scale for us and for our customers. Secondly, when it comes to a holistic ZTNA solution, uh, the live line for a holistic ZTNA solution is the reliability of the connectivity. And the connectivity is established through the um, network tunneling technology. And we have grounds up built a network tunneling technology that is not only reliable, uh, but it is robust, it is resilient, it is high performing, it can handle any uh, type of TCP IP protocol. Because one of the inhibitions when it comes to embracing a ZTNA solution, which we have heard from some of the customers who are super happy to hear how Gateway is able to overcome it is the fact that many of the ZTNA solutions is not able to handle all of the TCP IP protocols. But whereas our solution, since it's a modern um, network stack, network tunneling technology, we are able to handle any TCP IP protocol, which means there shouldn't be 
any application that cannot be supported through the silence gateway ZTNA solution. So that's like the second thing that I would like to uh, highlight. The third thing, which is an extension of the tunneling technology that I referred to, not necessarily tunneling technology, but it's it's basically like the network stack that we have built. It is a network stack that is very modern, and modern means it can also support a protocol called as Anycast. And since we are able to support this Anycast protocol, we are able to bring in the users to the nearest edge region um, in almost like 104 locations, um, which means that from a performance standpoint too, and from a routing efficiency standpoint too, we have built in um, the necessary ingredients to make it um, real high performing. So that's third of the thing that I would like to highlight. The, the fourth thing that I would like to highlight is, we talked about it or touched upon it at the beginning too. When it comes to a ZTNA solution, there is always this notion that it is limited to identity and context, but it is more than identity and context. There are several other underpinnings that I highlighted. And one of the most important underpinning is the need for a ZTNA solution to also deliver network protection, network security. And we provide zero day threat detection. When we say network protection, we also provide zero day threat detection in the process. So a best in class solution should be able to help like thwart phishing attacks, um, C2B conning. Um, it should be able to do malicious domain detection. So if we bring in like those capabilities too. We also have the equivalent of what is being referred to as um, content filtering so that for compliance reasons, if enterprises need to prevent their users from accessing certain types of content, then we have the variable to do that. And the most important thing, in my opinion, that we are able to bring to the table is the ease of deployment. Okay, um, there's a saying that simple things should be simple and complex things should be possible. Okay, and we make it possible through our very elegant ACL framework. Um, if you recollect, Noah, I did say that the ACL framework is the live line for the success of a ZTNA solution. In that regard, our ACL framework has been so elegantly designed, okay? It has been elegantly designed with the express purpose of letting anyone, he doesn't need to be a expert network administrator. And that's where like it's going to become very easy even for mid-market and small and medium businesses who may not have a very seasoned network administrators to be able to still deploy the silence gateway ZTNA solution. Because our descriptive ACL framework allows anyone to simply define who can access what under which condition. Okay, it is as simple as like how I just expressed it. Who can access what under which condition? Okay, who is the user? Okay, uh, what is like what resource they can access and which condition is? The condition can be um, factoring in the risk scores. It can be factoring in the security posture and everything is defined in one single integrated canvas, which I believe not that many, or to the best of my knowledge, I haven't seen such a elegant ACL construct in my two decades or more uh, of being in the network and security space. So I'm, I'm extremely like, I would say with all humility, that is like one aspect of the implementation that I'm super proud of that the team was able to deliver. It, it it sort of like deconstructs and makes it like so easy for someone to embrace ZTNA solution because in, in addition to the one inhibition that I said, the protocol support, the other inhibition when it comes to rolling out a ZTNA solution is, hey, how am I going to manage these different network segments? And I think we have an answer with our ACL framework, which is like uh, the icing on the cake when it comes to the silence gateway ZTNA solution. 